There is much to discuss. Let's get to our panel right now. Cecilia Nahon is a former Argentine ambassador to the United States. She is here with us in Washington. Also with us, Inez Bustillo is the director of the United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean. From Beijing, Victor Gao is an international affairs commentator, and Mark Weisbrot is the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research. He also joins us right here in our studio in Washington. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Victor, let's start with you out in Beijing. The uh, China CELAC Forum has now held its second ministerial meeting. There is a promise of China investing $250 billion in the next decade. What can you tell us about China's plans and intentions for the region and its commitment? Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, Latin American countries are probably the furthest away from China. However, in recent years, we have seen very encouraging and very rapid development of cooperation between China and the Latin American countries, as well as Caribbean countries. And this is mainly because China is now already the largest trading nation in the world, the largest manufacturing nation in the world, and China has accumulated a very strong track record in especially infrastructure projects. And I think when we look at Latin American countries and Caribbean countries, we actually see a very natural fit, mainly because China can really help many of these countries in that particular part of the world in beefing up infrastructure connectivity, in helping them to get greater access to the vast markets here in the Asian Pacific region, especially in East Asia, Southeast Asia, etc. And China now looks at the Latin American countries and the Caribbean countries as very much an important part of the One Belt, One Road initiative. We can work together, not only in boosting trade and commerce, but also in beefing up connectivity and infrastructure. And this will be a win-win situation for both China, as well as people and countries in the Latin American region, as well as in the Caribbean region. Ambassador, let's look at the nature of the trade relationship between China and Latin America. I mean, some of the countries in Latin America, some of the major countries like Argentina, Brazil, Chile, they already have a close relationship with China. But whereas it used to be one where China imported primary goods from these countries, things like agricultural products, as we heard in our report, uh, minerals, uh, now we are hearing about Chinese investments in things like technology and in the auto industry. Is that relationship changing? Well, I celebrate, I really cherish the realization of this CELAC China Forum in Chile, and I think that there's a great opportunity to continue building on the progress that has been made in the bilateral relation between the region and China, and also to face some of the challenges that the relation has. And as you say, certainly one of the challenges is to continue developing export diversification from Latin America, in particular from Argentina, from Brazil, from Peru. These countries really need to continue diversifying their export exports to China, and also it's good that China is considering moving up into different sectors of investment in Latin America, not only on the extractive sector, but really getting into more value-added sectors in the region, certainly in the technology sector, in the manufacturing sector, there are opportunities, apart from the infrastructure uh, projects, big main infrastructure projects. So I, I think that certainly that's the direction to go. There's still a lot to accomplish, but the, the path is on the right way. Mark, if we look at trade between China and Latin America, it is growing, but how much of that has to do with the fact that the president here in the United States, President Trump, has now adopted an America First policy, a very inward, some would say, protectionist policy? Well, I don't know how much difference that's made yet. I mean, obviously, he's not very popular anywhere, uh, and so that makes a difference. Um, and some of his policies have been considerably more aggressive towards Latin America than prior. For example, they're trying to overthrow the government of Venezuela right now. They've pretty much said that uh, publicly. They have sanctions that are illegal under the OAS charter and under the Geneva Conventions. And, you know, Venezuela is not, uh, nobody claims that Venezuela is a real security threat uh, to the United States. So it's obviously just because they want a change of, of government. This is considered very bad in, in most of Latin America. And it's interesting because the meeting with uh, Salak. You know, CELAC is actually a result of previous intervention by the United States. It was formed after the 2009 military coup right. 
And, and so this really uh, changed things. They created this organization without the United States and Canada. And even though now the, uh, there are the most powerful governments in, in Latin America are, are right wing, you still have this institution that was created by the left wing governments to minimize some of the US interference in the region. But has it impacted the trade relationship with those countries? Has, has Salak? No, has oh. all this impacted the American relationship, trade relationship with the country? Well, there's no doubt. That, yeah, I think it has. I mean, you know, the, the U.S. share of trade has been declining for quite a long time, and the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, share, uh, you know, uh, doubled from, uh, I think, 2005 to 2010, and it's, it's about steady uh, since mm -hmm. then. Okay. Ines, let's listen to what the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said at the china Select meeting. Let's watch. Today's world is in a period of development, transformations, and adjustments of great dimensions in which the correlation and interdependence between countries is becoming increasingly deeper and humanity faces numerous shared challenges. Despite the enormous geographic distance between China and Latin America and Caribbean countries, we are developing nations united by the same dream of peace, development, and happiness of our people. So, in as there we heard the foreign minister of China there talk about the interdependence between countries. Was that another affirmation of globalization? And how is that viewed in Latin America? I think that was a, a very important point. And in fact, the meeting that just took place in Santiago, Chile, which was the second one, the first took place in 2015 in Beijing, is really a milestone, a step forward in trying to seek closer cooperation between China and CELAC in order not only to boost trade and investment and diversify, but also in terms of shared prosperity and growth in, in, in a world where globalization and interconnectivity is, is ever more important. Let me highlight how uh, the trade relationship and the investment relationship has deepened. In the first uh, meeting that took place in Beijing, the plan, the, they adopted the commitment to increase um, two-way trade by 2025 to 500 million. We're half towards that target. And in terms of foreign direct investment, it was agreed to increase the stock to a 250,000. Also, we are close to half. So the relationship has deepened, and in part has deepened because of the growth of China. In 2000, for example, of Latin American exports to China just represented 1% of total exports. Right now, it's about 10%. And it's the growth of China. It's also the prices of the rise of commodities, et cetera. But as Cecilia was saying, it's the relationship has increased. It's extremely important, but also it needs to diversify. And uh, in terms of both trade and investment, and also in terms of working together, which was agreed at the summit in CELAC, in terms of science, technology, innovation, and infrastructure, as well as other topics. And are you seeing that uh, diversification already? We are, we are seeing, in the case, for example, of trade, it still, diversification will take some time. Yeah. It, right now, five products constitute about 70%, I mean, just five products represent 70% of what is being exported to China. In terms of, and just three countries capture about 80% of foreign direct investment. But as it was said before, it, even though most of the foreign direct investment has gone into uh, raw materials, et cetera, in the last year, in the last years, we've seen more into telecommunications, uh, renew, non -renewable, uh, renewable energy. So we're seeing slowly. It takes time, but we're seeing some type of diversification. Victor, does China see the United States as a rival in its trade relationship with Latin America uh, or as a partner? Are we seeing two big powers competing here? I personally don't see the United States as a rival for China in China's businesses in Latin America and Caribbean region, uh, mainly because the United States has been there for many decades, if not a couple of centuries. And uh, uh, many Latin American countries, Caribbean uh, countries, have uh, extensive relations, sometimes complicated, of course, with the United States. And uh, uh, China comes in as an additional demand for many commodities, many goods uh, produced in Latin American countries. China, of course, has one of the biggest market. The Chinese government official recently said that going forward, the Chinese consumer market is expected to be about four times or five times bigger 
than that of the United States. So I think in the longer term, and philosophically speaking, as well as pragmatically speaking, it is important for many countries in Latin America, in Caribbean uh, countries, to engage with China as an additional business partner. Further, I think, from the Chinese perspective, we have no problem at all with each and every country in that important part of the world. And I think, regardless of whether they are bigger or smaller, we treat every one of these countries as an equal partner. Even though, given China's size and importance in global trade, we tend also to focus very much on regional concepts on promoting connectivity across nations in that part of the world so that people and different countries can really benefit from higher level of connectivity. And this may be a little bit different in terms of approach from China versus that of the United States. And we urge the United States to treat every country in Latin America, in Caribbean nations, as an equal and reframe and stop from lecturing the Latin American countries or Caribbean countries as if the United States is above many countries and above the people in that important part of the world.